Monday's session should be very, very good if we confirm. Again, that's the big number, if we confirm. If we do, there's a lot of really good uh, value back to the upside. And I think, you know, instead of, you know, really trying to look at 3,000 different stocks, just look for the leaders, look for the names that had really big earning surprises. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is having a great uh, weekend. Just a, a quick announcement. Uh, my wife is out of town Monday and Tuesday, so unfortunately there won't be I won't be able to record a video Monday and Tuesday night. Again, two kids, two different schedules after the close, impossible, like literally impossible. So I apologize for any inconvenience. Uh, the video will resume uh, again on Wednesday. So thank you very much for your uh, patience, understanding. Uh, so let's talk about the market. Uh, obviously the big story for the last week or so was this kind of rolling top that we identified uh, about a week ago. And again, the, 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 moral, the message was, we're not going back to uh, the March lows. All it is, just be careful of the the names that were overextended uh, potentially get pulled. And that's exactly what happened. They, they, they got pulled. And I thought that we had a shot to get to, uh, you know, the 385 level uh, on the queues. We got down to about 387. So good, healthy pullback. And that's all it was, kind of a reset for stocks just to kind of get their feet under them. And most important, have a little bit of digestion. Remember, too far, too fast is never good for anybody. Once the stocks are in the nosebleed session, uh, only back Bad things can happen and, and if you are uh, a novice investor or you know a, a trader that's been li literally trading only for the last year or so that didn't really you know get the message over the last week or so your names that were overextended they got pulled uh, pretty pretty hard and the lesson was it was just always just to kind of keep always one eye open on the the potential effects, right? Potential hazards that could potentially fall under your feet without even recognizing them and not stepping into an opal an opal manhole to kind of falling through. And that's what it was. So the Bulls did uh, a great, great job uh, over the last uh, three and a half weeks to get to these uh, upward levels. They came back, reset, and now we are literally to the Bulls credit. And it's very, very easy for the Bulls to give up, but for the Bulls credit and how kind of a mainstay of what this rally has been all about uh, ever since we reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average on October 18th, how bulls are handling levels. And that's the most important part. It's market structure. They've handled levels uh, very, very well. Obviously, the remount of the 50 even the handling of the, the back test, kind of the, the slow rolling top that, that got issued off the, um, off the upper Bollinger Band and kind of where we are now. And what, to the Bulls, uh, for the Bulls' uh, credit, they did a great job on Friday. Uh, not only did they reclaim the 10-day moving average, they reclaimed the 5-day. And the 5-day uh, is the most important, at least for me, both long and short, because it'll give you a really good notification of what potentially could happen next and we reclaimed the five-day moving average, and now we're literally one day away. If we could confirm this candle here, this roughly, this 395.50 level, if we could just reclaim this 395.50 uh, level, there's a really high probability that we finally get our march into the fourth quarter uh, rally all the way back up to this 403 potential. So I, I think Monday's, uh, Monday's, uh, Monday's, Monday's session should be very, very good if we confirm. Again, that's the big number, if we confirm. If we do, there's a lot of really good uh, value back to the upside. And I think, you know, instead of, you know, really trying to look at 3,000 different stocks, just look for the leaders, look for the names that had really big earning surprises, uh, had really big option order flow, and had really, really big moves that never came in with this rolling congestion uh, back test. And look at some of the names. You know, you had TTD, had great numbers, never really came in, only had a couple of days in, reclaimed the five-day moving average, and traded all-time highs on Fridays as part of the pivots uh, we had. Uh, a name like RBLX, the same thing, right? It only came in, digested its earnings, and now the stock is one day away uh, from reclaiming its 
earnings highs. Uh, last week, if you guys remember, they were coming in for the end of the month, uh, 125 and some 135 calls. So if RBLX uh, confirms this upper channel here, you could have a really, really uh, big run. A name like uh, Airbnb also had really big numbers, right? Never came in, uh, even through this back testing that we had uh, in the last five days or so, it kept on putting in higher lows and, and just kind of straddling this five-day moving average. Also, one day away, so, same as RBLX, uh, also one day away from attacking uh, its earnings highs. Um, so that looks great uh, as well. Look at DXCM, never went down, right? Had this big, big move, consolidated as well, ready to go higher. Look at a name like Qualcomm, never came in, right? Same thing as uh, RBLX, same thing as Airbnb, had a big market run uh, on its earnings, putting in higher lows, straddling this five-day moving average. And now all it needs to do is just, just take out this little mini pennant here, and we're going back to all-time highs. So there's a lot of really good value. I think if it, it would take you, uh, it would take you five minutes to go through uh, the Nasdaq 100 charts going into Monday's session. If we confirm, you don't have to be too creative. There's a lot of really good names that are really coming out of aggressive channels, but not all is well. You still had uh, Tesla, uh, you know, continuing to sell, lost the five day. I mean, there were some really aggressive pivots uh, this week on the downside. Uh, lost its 10 day moving average. Uh, and now it's trying to get back over the 20, but we're not sure exactly how much stock Elon Musk has to sell. This is obviously the ax uh, in this uh, sell off. Do I believe after he gets cleaned up, does the stock kind of turn around, go back higher? Absolutely, I really do. Uh, but for now, nobody really knows how many shares he has left. Um, so far, I, I don't know what the number was that he sold. I think it's a very fluid situation. Nobody will really know until he's done and actually probably, right, gun to my head, will probably tweet out and say, hey, by the way, I'm done selling my stock. So I, I think there'll probably be a little bit more pressure uh, on Tesla going into this week, but I, I don't think it's something that is going to last that much longer uh, just because once they clean them up, I think the stock uh, just based on sheer euphoria and sheer uh, people buying uh, aggressive dips in the name, uh, we'll probably start turning around uh, at some point in the future. But for the next couple of days, I still believe uh, the value to the name is still to the downside uh, on some names. And a name like, uh, you know, names like uh, Zillow, right? Zillow, I really like once it starts taking out. Uh, really, once it starts taking out the earnings low, I, I believe once it does, you're going to have a couple of weeks of really slow drip death in the stock. And that's exactly what happened uh, with FUBU on Friday, despite uh, the market, the, you know, the rest of the market really getting their feedback uh, on solid ground. You can see what happened. Once it started losing, uh, two days ago, it started losing its earnings low, and now it's just kind of floating down. And I probably see the same thing in the future for Zillow as you are starting to see for Fubo. So both of those names, you're probably going to, you know, you're probably going to see more kind of drip, slow drip death. I don't know, I don't want to call it death, but it's sheer weakness. So far, I know some of you guys already started um, a short position on Fubu, and now we are waiting for uh, Zillow uh, to confirm. So I, I think going into Monday's session, it's pretty, you know, a lot of times, again, you have, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of things you have to consider, play devil's advocate. I, I think it's a pretty basic uh, trading session for Monday. If we can just confirm this channel right here, we start uh, channel back to the upside and all time highs. If we get rejected on this channel, then obviously we're going to you know, start falling apart, uh, possibly going back to Thursday's low. So again, pretty important day, but if everything plays out the way it should, just a, just a, just a sheer aggression, uh, which we saw on Friday in a lot of names, uh, again, gun to my head, I think we do uh, go higher. So let's talk about uh, Friday's session. I, I was preparing for the downside. I was, I was definitely waiting for that second wave uh, down that never came. But the cool part about trading, and if you've been doing this for a long time, you have an opinion, your opinion could be wrong, right? Uh, you know, my opinion was five days ago, I saw a rolling top and we played out that way and the value was to the downside. Um, I thought we were gonna have one more day of selling, which kind of never came, but that's cool. Again, you're, you're, you're allowed to be wrong. I, you know, I'm wrong every single day. Your opinion could be wrong every single day, as long as you're not stubborn enough to kind of force the issue in that direction without having proper confirmation. Once, you know, once the market shifts and uh, stocks start reclaiming levels and the 
ETFs start reclaiming levels, you just got to jump ship. You got to jump ship with your opinion. It's not about being right. It's not. It's about being. Uh, it's about being proper, reading the market, and that's the most important part. And again, I started. Uh, I started the day. I was looking a lot of shorts. Again, I was looking at Zillow. I was looking at ISRG. Fubo is the is the one of the very few that triggered 2485. It builds below, closed pretty much at the lows that they near the 24 dollars level. I, I think the stock goes lower. Uh, QS, I kind of like. I'm very, very surprised uh, QS didn't participate uh, in Friday's rally. I still like it. I think the stock looks really, really good. Guys, keep an eye on this thing for this week. Uh, this thing starts building the $40 area. I still think goes higher. Uh, there's a lot of deep out of the money call bets, uh, short-term expiration for the next a uh, couple of weeks. So this thing looks good. Definitely keep an eye on QS. Hey, maybe just rest it. Okay. A lot of times, uh, maybe, you know, stocks just rested. Uh, SP, uh, SPLK, I was watching to the downside, obviously never confirmed as well. ONDS, I was watching to the upside, never confirmed. Uh, look at, oh, keep an eye on ONDS, guys. Uh, maybe this thing again also rested. Watch this ONDS. They did have $12.5 calls going into the end of the month uh, expiration. Uh, watch this $11 break on ONDS for this week. Um, and th 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 Elucid, again, I'm watching as well. Nice looking chart, didn't confirm, which is very, very uh, odd considering how strong the tape was. SEH also didn't confirm to the upside. Adobe didn't confirm to the downside. There's a lot of names that just didn't confirm, so we had to wait and wait and wait and wait. Uh, and slowly but surely, again, AGC is another name. Guys, watch this AGC, another name uh, that just didn't confirm. Watch this uh, AGC. If this thing starts building again uh, over the $17 area, it should go. We saw a really aggressive aggressive, uh, deep out of the money, 20, 27 and a half dollar calls uh, with short-term expiration. I don't think the story is written on this uh, just yet, just because of the aggressive uh, out of the money call buyers. So here is where the day really got aggressive. And, and again, here's a more evidence of there's a lot of selling pressure still in Tesla just because Again, nobody's really unsure. Uh, excuse me, nobody's really sure of how much stock Elon has to uh, has to sell. But uh, here's the notes here: second entry, 1054. If it builds below, can flush for the initial move to 1044. We always look at initial moves first, and once it stops at the initial area and can hold on, then we start looking uh, at downward pressure. Tesla got absolutely destroyed. Congratulations for all you guys. Uh, who caught Tesla. So here is the 1054. It took out this whole channel here, traded all the way down to 1041. That was the initial move, a $13 candle, rallied a little bit. And once it lost that 1041, got massacred. It went all the way down to 1019. Uh, if you look at levels for Tesla, you have uh, this 1013 support. And then if it starts losing the 1013, considering if he's selling more stock, uh, then you see the 987 lows uh, from a week, and if this thing loses 987, then you got another uh, pretty aggressive tidal wave ahead. But it's all predicated on how much stock uh, he sold and how much stock he plans uh, to sell. So a really, really big move on Tesla. Uh, AMD you started seeing things to the upside. AMD 147.30 rejected twice, needs to build. Not a big move, uh, like a dollar fifty move. But the point is, uh, you can see here's the 147.30 and went all the way up to uh, 48 and a half. But the point is. If the market starts putting up upward bias pressure, uh, you have a potential move to the 142 uh, initial measured potential. And here is kind of what we talked about on, on, on Tesla. So you had 1044 and then you had 1033, it broke out, and 1014. And then obviously a buyer came in with pretty big size. And keep this in mind, for next week, they, he came in with nearly a million dollars uh, worth of premium for this week's a uh, thousand puts again. This could people are really betting uh, that it's going to start getting stretched out as Elon continues uh, to make sales. Uh, Nvidia, not a big move here. You know, it was like a dollar fifty trade. It stopped perfectly at the bottom. Uh, ninety seven seventy is big support if it builds below can flush. Traded down to like ninety, like ninety six. Nothing big there. Uh, TTD again, really big uh, mover. Had great earnings. Reclaimed earnings highs. Ninety eight twenty needs to build. Uh, here was TTD. I still like this thing going into Monday. Uh, took out the 98.20, went to almost 101. I still like it uh, for upside buys, assuming the market continues its move. So that was good. Uh, again, here's a note some FUBU should drift for the next week or so, and that's exactly uh, what happened, what's happening. Uh, here goes TTD, 100 test, 1 to 101. 
AMD new highs, Zillow, I really, really like the Zillow short. Uh, it's gonna be a swing, it's not a day trade, but it, once this thing starts closing, and starts building under this uh, 63 level, you're gonna see a multiple week, uh, it should see a multiple week decline uh, there as well. So that's it, so we are set up uh, for this week. Again, the big number on the Qs, uh, is this candle here, which is 95.36. Once it gets above this 95.36 area, you should start seeing some aggressive buys back to the upside. Oh, one little stock you guys should really watch for this week uh, is this little stock RGS. Um, I don't know what this was, but look at this Look at this volume bar here, really, really big volume bar. It broke out, uh, put in its highest close into, into the supply. They were coming for December seven and a half dollar calls on repeat buyers. Now again, I'm not a you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but the stock is at three, you know, the stock is at 350. They're betting for a point a move of seven and a half. Hey, if this thing starts reclaiming this whole channel here, maybe you can get a year end surprise. Guys, have a great remainder of your weekend. God bless. Again, there's no broadcast on Monday. There's no video, excuse me. There's no video on, on Monday or Tuesday. My wife's out of town. I'm playing uh, daddy duty. It will resume on Wednesday. Guys, God bless and have a great weekend.